Good day everyone, we will be working with creating a unique constraint in our Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio today using our AdventureWorks database. And just a little background, you, as you all know, constraints let you define the way that the database engine automatically enforces the integrity of a database. And constraints define rules regarding the values allowed in columns and are the standard mechanism for enforcing integrity. And we have three of those different types of constraints available within SQL Server that will ensure you are able to maintain your database's integrity. That's the primary key, the foreign key, and the composite or unique key. A unique, a unique constraint key allows you to enforce the uniqueness property of columns other than a primary key within the table. Now in a unique constraint, no two rows in the table can have the same value for the columns. Primary keys also enforce uniqueness, but primary keys do not allow for the null as one of the unique values, whereas the unique constraint does. And you can use unique constraints to make sure that no duplicate values are entered in specific columns that do not participate in a primary key. So use a unique constraint instead of a primary key when you want to enforce the uniqueness of a column or a combination of columns that is not the primary key. Now multiple unique constraints can be defined on table, whereas only the primary constraint can be defined on a table. Once again, like I said, unlike primary key constraints, unique constraints allow for the value null. However, as with any part or any value participating in a unique constraint, only one null value is allowed per column. Let's go ahead and take a look how to create those unique constraints using our SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use our AdventureWorks database here. So let's go ahead and expand that. And we're going to open a table which we want to create our constraint and design view. So let's go ahead and look at our tables. We're going to use the Human Resources Employee table. So we're going to right click on that. And we're going to select Design from our menu here. So let's go ahead and click that now. Now that we are in that design view of our Human Resources Employee table, let's go ahead and go up to the Table Designer. And once we click on the Table Designer here at the top of our toolbar, we'll see a drop-down menu come into effect for us. Alright, from here we are going to want to go ahead and click on Indexes, Keys. Once we select the indexes keys, you'll see that the indexes keys window will open up and we will be able to look at our keys that way. Now if we move this over, you can see that our table does have a primary key identified here and that is reflected in our index keys menu as well. Let's go ahead and select our employee login ID here. We're going to go ahead and click on the Add button to create our new key. So let's click on the Add button there. Now we're going to click the Type property in the right side of the property box and change it from the default of Index to Unique Key. And yours should look just like that. Now let's go up here to the Columns portion here, and we're going to look at the Columns property section. We should see some ellipses here at the end. Go ahead and click those now. And now we can select the columns we wish to include in our unique constraint. And we'll go ahead and hit OK here. We'll click the Close button. And we're going to save our newly created constraint by selecting the Save All from the File menu as shown in right here. And that's it. Now we have created our unique key constraint. We have created our unique constraint here using our SQL Server Management Studio. That's it. That's how easy it is. So we can take a look and just make sure everything took. Table Designer, Index Keys, 
here are our primary unique keys or indexes. So we can see that our login ID is a unique key. Our employee business unique entity ID is still our primary key. And you see our indexes. That's it. Our unique key is still here. So that's that'll be it for creating a unique constraint. So thanks for following along in this quick tutorial on creating a unique constraint using our SQL Server Management Studio. Take care.